Good morning. Welcome in. Friday, September 11th. For this week's safety focus, I will start off with the weather today. It's looking like it's going to be a mostly cloudy morning, but breaking to some uh, mix of sun and clouds this afternoon, about a high of low 60s. So good day to be outside working. Really good working weather. I wanted to kind of start off this meeting with just uh, a little bit on the Corona virus travel restriction front. This map that we're all looking at here, this is our um, kind of leisurely travel map. Every Everything in green are, are all the quarantine free counties uh, that Vermonters are allowed to go and travel or leisurely travel. Anything in yellow or red is maintain some type of quarantine travel restrictions. So with hunting season coming up with the fact that we've been kind of isolated and in our own bubbles for the last four to five months, we're seeing more people trying to get out and, and enjoy September and October before the winter hits. So please let your supervisor know of any extended travel, leisurely travel, uh, so we can all be coordinated from operations to health and safety to making sure that we're following all the guidelines. So just some good communication and just let us know so we can plan accordingly. Any more questions or information, health and safety is readily available to answer the phone. Just give me a call on my cell, 802-598-8107. Much appreciated. So getting into the presentation today, our code of conduct. What, oh, Ben just asked, what about beyond the map? Beyond the map is mandatory, uh, it's mandatory quarantine. Uh, leisurely travel right now is only uh, north, the Northeast region, pretty much Virginia, and then you move up into West Virginia, into Ohio, Pennsylvania, all the way to Maine. That's, that's the leisurely travel where there's areas where we can quarantine free. Anything greater beyond that, we would have to quarantine uh, 14 days or seven days in the test. Um, for any leisurely travel, not not a essential functions for the for work, but for leisurely travel. Thank you, Ben, for that. Um, so going into the uh, code of conduct is to strive for restraint, discretion, and integrity. Uh, these are some really good moral compass for us, and and to really try to maintain some restraint when we might get angry, some discretion with some information that we need to be careful about who we tell, and that integrity part is to making sure that what you're speaking and saying to one another is, is honest and truthfully uh, and held to a, a high standard. So it's a, it's a very important code item. It's a very uh, behavior-based and behavior uh, type of alignment that we'd like to see across all of uh, all sectors in the R organization. So safety news, another seven days without a recordable injury. Excellent job this week. I know it's a kind of a short week. I can't believe it's already Sunday or um, Friday, um, but excellent job this week. We didn't have uh, really any any incidents to report at all, so it's great. So keep up the good work. Remember, the most important part of safety is having a plan for the day, and, and starts with that morning JHA. So everybody's doing an excellent job on teams. Just keep it up. Keep giving us a call if there's any questions or concerns or issues with your tablets. But it seems like our new process is working well, and we're seeing the results each week over the last 37 days. Uh, next week starts the uh, National uh, Safety Stand Down to Prevent Falls. Uh, so we've, we've kind of started early. Last week we're talking scaffolding. This week we're going to talk ladders. Next week we'll just talk about general fall protection. Um, but again, falls is one of the leading um, indicators of fatalities in construction. So we really need to put an emphasis on all of our projects regarding any type of fall hazards, if it's scaffolding, ladders, uh, working above six feet, personal fall arrest system, guardrail systems, things like that, uh, have best practices put in place so we can prevent a uh, fall from occurring. So this week, we just want to kind of highlight ladders. It's a very important topic. We, we, it's something that sometimes we don't think about on a day-to-day -day basis, but we, it's a good time to, to make sure that we always plan ahead for our job. Again, at that JHA, make sure if we do have some type of means of egress or we're going to be working on a ladder or in and out of an excavation or trying to get to some scaffolding. Um, we have the right type. You know, we wanna make sure the extension, if we're using extension ladder, we have enough height. Remember ladders need to be extended three feet above the landing so we can 
get off and on our ladder using three points of contact. Um, we don't use a whole lot of step ladders anymore. That was something that we mostly used in the solar fields, but again, they're readily available. Step ladders can be handy for some uh, for some tasks, but for the most part, we're using extension ladders out there. So make sure that we're going through our ladders this week and doing a good thorough inspection. Um, we have uh, spares readily available in the tool crib. So if you're seeing any uh, defects such as missing runs, bolts, cleats, or other defects of the ladder, when in doubt, take it out or make a call, let us know and we'll swing in and uh, repair it for you or take it out of service for you. If you're on site, um, please, and you take the ladder out of service, um, please just kind of red tag it and say, do not use on it. We do have those tags available in the tool crib as well. Some other best practices to, uh, to allow sufficient room to a step uh, off the ladder safely. Again, when we're in kind of congested areas, we wanna make sure that you don't have those ankle injuries or, or individuals bumping the ladder as they're walking by. So try to always set up, set up a ladder where everyone can see it. Um, and it's a nice little uh, good means of egress to get off and on the ladder. Set it at appropriate angle. Uh, one of the best kind of tips and tricks for setting up a ladder is, is to have, have the ladder uh, cleats right at your feet and then extend your arm straight out. Uh, as you as you leading up your extension ladder on the, on the object or slope uh, scaffolding system, and it's kind of that um, good angle is really at that 45 degree angle. So if you kind of stand with your arm straight out, the base of the ladder at your feet, that angle is is pretty close to that 45 degree angle. You want to set the base of the ladder so that the bottom is 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 really secure. Uh, if if there's an issue there, we want to try to maybe. You can hilt the into concrete with a two by four, or you can uh, drive some current pins into the soil so that the, the, the ladder won't kick out on you. You can also secure the top of the ladder <clears throat> onto the scaffolding or any other objects using tire wire or rope. You always wanna make sure that that ladder is secure. Maintain three points of contact on that ladder at all times and always face the ladder when climbing up or descending the ladder. Always, you always wanna be facing the ladder. Your body should always be inside those the rails of the ladder. If you're overreaching, uh, means we're kind of taking some shortcuts and we're putting each other at risk. So never carry tools in your hand while climbing up and down a ladder. If you can use that, uh, use some type of rope. Um, when you get on top, if you're working it on a roof or on the scaffolding, just have a little rope set up so you can kind of lower a bucket down, up and down. Uh, so we are not carrying a whole lot of tools because it's really hard to maintain three points of contact when you're carrying objects up and down. So make sure that ladder is always extended three feet above the landing. Again, the reason for it is so you don't extend yourself and put yourself in danger. You can have good three points of contact uh, ascending and accessing the ladder. So those are all some really important tips and trips to work uh, safe on ladders. Ladders are are definitely a, a very important tool for us out there. So let's take care of them, make sure they're inspected and making sure that we're working uh, and following these best practices while on ladders. That's all I have for today. I will pass it over to Ken for the rest of our presentation this morning. Okay, thanks, Matt. I guess one further comment on ladders. It makes sense if we're going to have a ladder more than just a temporary one day setup, even for one day setup, to do extra securement at the top and bottom. Good especially point. if it's a long-term throughout a project setup. Okay, I'm gonna pull up my, show my screen. And I'm gonna start with the announcement that is not in the uh, weekly email with something from Joey on the Appleton on the Foundation Mobile. And this is an announcement I believe was sent out everyone saying that the uh, foundation released an update was actually done on Thursday, yesterday, and now that it's installed that all the mobile app users, uh, that means phone and tablet users, will need to download the new app from either the apps, the Apple App Store uh, for iPhone users or the Google Play Store for the Android users. So based on the release, the timing of the found, from foundation, it makes most sense to do it today. Now we're here, so I'll go ahead and do it. Those who are using the Foundation Mobile in the web browser, that means Internet Explorer, 
Google Chrome, et cetera, on your laptop or PC, you won't be affected. The website will automatically update next time you sign in. So if you have any questions, check with Brendan or Joey. Hopefully it goes smoothly. Okay, back to the regular email. No new announcements. Uh, there's still a reminder on the transfer tank logs, and I believe there'll be a, an update to that announcement with a Teams online uh, web-based uh, way of logging these tank logs and equipment hour logs. 401k reminder just is still there if anyone wants to click down there to the Morgan Stanley contact list and set up an appointment or anything like that on your 401k. This week we have two new employees. Here is Tim Harrington. I understand it's the brother of Brian Harrington. And this is Aubrey Marshall. So welcome to both you guys. I don't have emails from either of you guys, so hopefully if you hadn't been asked, you're able to pass along emails so you can receive these emails every Thursday night. And for the COVID policies, they're posted here. If you need them for reference or you need to uh, show someone if you're asked for some reason about our policies. And then for this week, we are highlighting the VTrans I-91 Bridge 25 South, 25 North joint and concrete repairs down in Springfield. So we're contracted with VTrans to rehabilitate a pair of three-span plate girder bridges carrying I-91 over, that's US Route 5, below it in Springfield. I guess this would be looking north, I believe, because I see the sign, uh, must be the Springfield exit sign ahead. But great view, this is from the, uh, from the man lift and it shows the the bridges and and how we're set up and lane closures and that sort of thing so our scope includes removal of all four finger joints and reconstruction of the bridge deck back walls approach slabs at each joint bridge seat rehab and associated jacking and shoring class two repair at the piers and abutments class two repair at the northbound passing lane curb plug joint paving, approach slab, underpinning via grout injection, and associated uh, traffic control. So there we are doing some demo around one of the joints. And the work is required extensive hand demolition and, and custom foam work to put it back. Been on site most of the summer, and the project is nearly complete. And here's some of that class two uh, repair work, demoed down to below the rebar, and some of the bars been replaced. And here's some of that intense hand work going on. And some jacking on one of the diaphragms. Pretty simple jacking arrangement. And some of the form work to the right. Some more form work going on there and putting back the, the joint after it's been demoed out and pouring it back in. And then finally a little paving to patch it all up so it can be put back into service. So we had a total of five mobile or modular homes get stuck in between our Jersey barriers and the guardrail despite maintaining a 14 foot wide length line or lane in accordance with our approved traffic control plan. So kind of strange that these extra wide loads get through, they shouldn't be getting through, they shouldn't, they should have been checked by the, the permitting uh, department at, at motor vehicles. And another project highlight is a crew's pet rat who hangs the hangs around the staging area around lunchtime. I'm kind of disappointed I didn't get a picture of the pet rat and I don't know what his name is. That would have been nice to put in the article too. So, <laughs> okay, well, that's it from Springfield for the photo archives. I got another little bridge construction project going on. This was in Richmond on the underpass there, Route 2. Or no, not Route 2, sorry, going up the hill. I, um, I don't know if this is probably the, the road going up to the water tanks there uh, um, and towards the schools. 
So there's Stu King, our former yeah. safety director prior to his retirement doing an inspection. So hopefully Stu's doing well. I heard from him probably a month ago or so and it seemed everything was good. So I'll pass it back to you, Matt. Have a good day. Hopefully everyone has a safe day. Let's continue our, uh, our uh, current trend of, uh, of good safety practice and, and results. Yeah, well said. I'll just piggyback on that real quick. Just continue what we're doing. Let's not get complacent. All it takes is for us to let our guard down. Um, so if we can keep maintaining those, those good safety systems. That's just starting the today off with a good JHA, with a good, good plan meeting. And uh, health and safety is here for any guidance and assistance. So let us know if you need anything. Have a safe day. See you. See you soon.